everybody, it's Allie Rittenhouse, and I am here today with the gorgeous Susan Hyatt. I've had the pleasure of knowing her for five, six, maybe even seven years. It has been a good hot minute, and just as hot as the topics we're going to be talking about today on your first time. So welcome, Susan. Thank you for being here today. Oh my gosh, Allie, thanks for having me. And I actually think it's been seven or eight years. So we we go back. Yes, almost like the inception of the start of your business, I think. It was like within the first two years. Yeah, because my business is turning 10 in, in uh, April. So Yes. Yeah. Well, happy almost decade. I hit that. I'm 11. So it is like double digits. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. I know that Thank you. when we first start out, you're like, are, are we going to hit that? You know, and then you hit it and you're like, that was a breeze. <laughs> I know. Come on the next decade. Bring exactly. It. Exactly. And speaking of being in business for almost a decade, you did something this year that took you completely outside of your comfort zone and that's what we're going to talk about today on this episode of your first time because the first time is always the scariest time no matter what it is that you're doing and hopefully this story today will help inspire you to put yourself out there and get over that first time hump because we all experience it right Absolutely. So first, tell us a little bit about you, because you're not only a badass life coach and a business coach, but you are just awesome in everything that you do. So bring us all up to date uh -huh. with, <laughs> with everything Thank Susan you. Hyatt brand encompasses. Well, you're right. I am a life coach. I'm also an author. I have a new book coming out this year called Bear, which is my non-diet approach to weight loss, because diets do not work. Exactly. You know it's true. Yes. Uh, I'm also an international retreat facilitator, and um, I mean, I do lots of things like you're doing here, webinars and podcasts, and um, anybody who is watching, I welcome you to my world. You can find me at shyatt.com. I love following Susan on Instagram. So if you are an IGer, I highly recommend that you go follow her over on Instagram as well. And we'll put those links below in the description as well. Thank you. Yes. I, yeah. So speaking of international retreats and Jake the Beagle, hi, Jake the Beagle, right? <laughs> Right? <laughs> <laughs> I can see him in the back kind of like saying hello. <laughs> oh, he just popped down. He heard me talking about him. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Stickers. Oh. He's like, where's my mark? Why, are, why am I not being interviewed? <laughs> so you mentioned about being an international retreat holder. And that yeah. is something that I really wanted to talk to you about today because retreats are scary enough let alone taking somebody internationally afar. So tell us a little bit about your first retreat. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about this because um, I am obsessed with travel and I always wanted to combine my love of travel with retreats. I was already doing retreats domestically um, and it was actually my son, Ryan, who is now 18, um, and if you follow me, you'll learn a lot about Ryan, a.k.a. Ferris Bueller. Yes. Who, um, I am so excited that he has graduated from high school this year. <laughs> like, get him to graduation. Uh, but Ryan, a.k.a. Ferris, is obsessed with martial arts. And about three years ago, he came to me and he said, I think that we should go to Thailand for a month because I want to learn Muay Thai. And I said, well, you can take yourself right up the street. <laughs> There's a martial arts place like less than a mile from our house. I will sign you up. And he was like, no, no, mom. I've read a lot about this. And American Muay Thai, they do not teach it like the masters teach it. And I need to go right to the source. Does this not sound like Ferris? I mean, seriously, we're, we're not, we're, we can't do it locally. We need to go to another country. <laughs> and I'm like, who are you? And so, you know, on my bucket list at the time, I had never left the country other than Vancouver, Canada. And um, I think that's it. I think that's it. 
uh, really, you know, had not traveled outside of the United States. So and you were so, planning an international retreat, yet hadn't actually traveled internationally. See, isn't right. that what? It's it's just all what you can dream, right? So keep going. I love totally. this Totally. <laughs> So, you know, my bucket list at the top was like Italy, Paris, you know, a lot of the places that are typical for Americans to dream to go about, to go to, and Thailand had never entered my mind. And I didn't know anything about Thailand. So when he's saying Thailand to me, I'm like, civil unrest, we don't know the language, you know, uh, absolutely not, you know, a, a, like a typical kind of ignorant American response. Mm -hmm. And so Ryan did what any great salesperson does, which is he found out what my objections were and he went away and found out the answers to overcome those objections. And one by one, he would come into my office and say like, did you know that most of Thailand, particularly where we would be going, they speak English very fluently, you know, and he would sort of plant these seeds in my mind to overcome these obstacles to the point that eventually I'm Googling Thailand and seeing these beautiful photos and then it's like it's my idea that we should go to Thailand. <laughs> you know, I'm like, A great like, salesman. Like, this was all over. I was like, how did this become a thing? But I said to him, I'm like, listen, you know, I can't just pick up and go to Thailand for a month. He was like, well, why not? You work for yourself. You talk about all the time that you could work from wherever. And I said, well, I'm married to your father and you have a sister and, you know, she has school, he has work. And so he was like, well, we could take a family vacation and, you know, they could be there for part of the time and then you and I could stay. And I started to think this was a good idea. He was totally so coaching the coach. <laughs> right. He totally was. And so I said to him, I tell you what, if I could convince a group of women to go on one of my retreats in Thailand that would fund our month in Thailand, we'll totally do it. All the while thinking, this is never going to happen. Like, this is never going to work out. And so I, I started talking about it on Facebook. I put a picture up, this beautiful photo of James Bond Island. And I said, hey, I really want to go to Thailand. Would anyone be interested if I put a retreat together? And so the thread on Facebook blew up and I put a package together and it sold out within 48 hours. And I was just like, what? And so then I really start, you know, talk about your first time. You know, my first time leaving the country, um, the research that needed to go into finding a place that I felt comfortable about and verifying that and checking sources. And um, and then also I have this, you know, 14-year-old or 15-year-old who he was stalking my Facebook and would run in and say, Allie said she put a deposit down, you know, and he was so excited. So I sold the retreat out before I even had the conversation with my husband that, hey, guess what we're doing? By the way. <laughs> you know, and I, I think that some of that was great in terms of asking for forgiveness instead of permission. Uh, with a lot of our goals, we can get hung up on doing it right and making sure everybody's on board. And sometimes you just got to rip the Band-Aid off and go for it. Yeah, and, and it is amazing to me to think because as the planner over here, I'm like, okay, if I wanted to do that, I first have to have my place, I have to have my deposit down, you know, I have to do all of these things, I have to hire a lawyer and, you know, all of the logistics that goes into it and you were like, mm, I'm just going to do this a little backwards and I'm going to first see, well, not really backwards, smart words is really right. what we should be saying and see if before I put all of this work into it, if anybody wants to join me. And that, right. it was just like the brilliant point of, I thought when I was seeing this go down, I was just like, wow, what a very interesting concept here to first see if there's interest and then, you know, put all of that instead of wasting all of these hours that could 
stop you from even putting it on because you get so caught up in the details. So I loved that piece. I was like, light bulb, when am I going to plan mine was then maybe my next steps in that. So, so tell me, okay, so from post to then 48 hours, like what was going through your mind as to all of the planning? I mean, it had to be such like an excitement yet scary, like so nervous too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and to the point that we were just talking about, I think a lot of entrepreneurs spend way too much time um, on the details before you're really hired for a job. So, like, testing to see if there's interest is so important, and then you have a job to do. So then, right. once in 48 hours it sold out, there was a ton of excitement, like, okay, and now I also have all this cash to go put a giant deposit down on an amazing you know, place in, in just the right spot. And I had done some research before I said right, something. Right. Like I had some places in mind. Right. Um, but then it then it was like, this is real. You know, when someone puts their deposit down, they want details. They want to book their flights. They want, and so I had to go into total fact finder mode and sort out all of those details, you know, from car service to meals to excursions, which I love to do, and I already knew how to do, but never, I'd never been there. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of searching out people who could give me accurate and reliable advice um, and recommendations. So there were tons of people on Facebook who had been or who had friends that lived there, um, there was another uh, coach that I knew really, really well that was planning a retreat in Thailand, but she was going further north, but she was a wealth of information. So it was really like tapping my network to see who knew what I needed to know and putting that together. But yes, it was scary. Um, you know, and then t planning not just the retreat, but the actual family vacation part of it. Right. On top of that, <laughs> spending the month right. there. Right. Then it's like, oh, I also have all these family members who are going and what am I going to do with them? Um, and then finding a place for Ryan and I to live for that month that was, you know, what what Muay Thai gym? Because there's a million of them. And who's reputable and who's nice to um, Americans and and, you know, all those details. Where am I going to work out while I'm over there? All that fun stuff. But it, it's just, you know, it's like so smart because it's no matter how much thought you put into a retreat, when you're planning it ahead of time, not knowing if anybody's interested, it's it's so much even more overwhelming and scary because you're like, what if nobody signs up? What if I do all of this work? Where for you, you had the motivation and the excitement and you probably put even more love and soul and heart into it knowing the people that were attending yeah, and how you could really help them instead of these fictitious, you know, imaginary people um, that you have no idea anything about. Right. I mean, it, it was absolutely true. And, and a lot of the offers that I put out into the world are that way. Like I create it once I have the people and it gives me just this extra motivation. But, you know, it was scary flying over there and like making sure once I got there early that like, oh, OK, this is actually too far from the retreat house to do that. Or, you know, this is this excursion that I thought looked amazing online is actually junky and I'm gonna have to scrap that plan. So I mean, retreats in and of themselves are an adventure, much less doing one in a country you've never visited. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I give you much respect because not only did you host that one, but how many international ones do you think that you've held since then? <laughs> um, I uh, probably seven or eight now. This year we're going to um, Scotland is coming up in April, and then Italy, Amalfi Coast. This will be the third time I've I've done that one, and then um, right outside of Barcelona, Spain, in September. So it's going to be an exciting year, and it's one of my it's one of my favorite things to do. So I put a lot of heart into it. Yeah, yeah. So for those that might be watching this, thinking I can't host an international retreat, uh, what would be one piece of advice that you could pass on to them today to just go after it? 
You know what? If if it's something that you're really interested in, you absolutely can. It's the same planning that you use for other things, just applied to a foreign country. So you just need to identify. I think it's helpful to identify what location is super exciting to you. I mean, that's what that's what really I think makes my retreat so fun is that I pick out all the stuff I get jacked up about or that I want to do and I try to think about okay what would feel like a movie you know what would blow their minds and if you approach it with that energy you absolutely can and and seriously there's no risk involved if you test out the idea first you can you can typically I can get a almost like a sensation if I think like there's enough buzz around this that this would this would fly yeah you know if it's crickets then it's like eh, you know that's maybe not the right destination or people just aren't into it at that time of the year but you can typically by asking around and using social media as a test figure out what level of interest there is there and then you can typically count on 10% of the people who say I'll go I'll go <laughs> You know, about 10% of those people will actually put money down. Mm -hmm. And I love that, that it's like, it may not necessarily be that people aren't interested. It just might be that location or the time of year. So, but right. you can figure that out by putting those feelers out there before right. you get too, you know, many hours put into that and then, and then wasting it. And I will say, Susan, I've seen the, uh, the hot air balloon. Uh, yeah. excursion and then wasn't there also and maybe they were in the same place but the restaurant that you had to take the boat to get to oh that was they were different they were different retreats okay. and yeah there was this really cool place um uh, along the Amalfi Coast that you can only get to by boat and it was a super amazing restaurant that had its own little beach and you know you just pull up um you get dumped out on this plank and, and and then it's like they it local people serving it's not a tourist trap it's it's you know i mean tourists certainly enjoy it yes. but it's the kind of place where the food is amazing all the time because it's fresh um and i mean you just can't beat it sangria on the beach i mean it was amazing oh oh i love it too bad i'm allergic to grapes oh, <laughs> yeah, that that would not be fun for you. No, it's not. And and I actually, you know, have since figured out why on most of my retreats that I've either held or attended end up sick. It's because there's wine or champagne involved. Oh, oh my God! I didn't even think of that. Holy crap! Yeah, you better stick to potato vodka. I yes, Tito's. Thank you, Tito's. I love you so much. <laughs> This is not a paid promotion for Tito's, and, and hopefully only people watching 21 or older are tuning right. in right now. <laughs> but awesome. Thank you so much, Susan, for being on your first time and sharing about your first time hosting an international retreat. I, I love watching you, and I think everybody else, if you've been dreaming of attending an international retreat, Check out Susan's that aren't already sold out. <laughs> True. Because... Maybe 2018, but thank you. Oh, wow. Wow. And see, that's what started with an idea. An mm -hmm. idea. Thank you, Ryan Hyatt, Thanks, for, Ryan. for putting that out there. We'll give you some credit on this interview. But it all starts with an idea. And by you putting it out there and taking action on it, it's what made it happen. And that is one thing that anybody can really do. So oh, thank you, Susan, for being here today on your first time. And make sure everybody that you follow her below, we've got all of her website and social media links listed below. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, have a great day, everybody. And thank you for watching this episode of Your First Time.